Now let's let's look at what will actually pinch that. What part of the femur, what actual part of the, the femur bone will pinch there? So if we swing around here on the femur on the other, other ooh, on the opposite side, then we can see that there is a femoral neck, which is right here. And the femoral neck will, when you move the femur in the socket, has a tendency um, or can uh, pinch into the lip of the acetabulum. So one more time, I'm going to highlight here would be, and remember, extending out from there would be a labrum. So that would form a little suction cup. And what's going to happen is if you move improperly or you move excessively too often, then this area right here in the center of the neck is going to move towards the labrum, okay? Either in this direction or in this direction, whatever. But that area can collide with the labrum and, um, and start to tear the labrum. Or, and or, because the, um, the labrum here would be touching this and rubbing against it, if it rubs against this area here, then the way that bone works is if you increase the amount of stress on a bone, then it will increase production of bone. So then what you would see is that we would have bone spurs along there. And that would mean, boom, let's actually get rid of all of this. Um, done. I actually want to get rid of the... Oh, did I? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Let's get rid of the 2D pen there. So there's the bone spurs. So this is what would happen is now you've got bone spurs. And that actually means that you, you would even be more likely to pinch the neck with the uh, labrum because you got a bunch of extra bone, you know, so it's just you can't even move as much as you could before. So look at where those bone spurs are because I think they're going to disappear as soon as I actually have the so, uh, the so as work and um, as I show you a video of motion. So just look at where those are. And remember, we're looking at the bone spurs and where the labrum is, so the lip of the acetabulum. And I want you to see how close they get to each other. Okay, um, they're gonna, you know, they're just gonna come really close to each other and during flexion, and that's where we start to get into problems, and this is why we need to externally rotate when we're in flexion. Okay, so here's the iliacus muscle, and it is going to, it's part of your iliopsoas, by the way, this is your uh, psoas. Connects to the spine, it crosses all the way over from your spine down to um, the uh, lesser trochanter of the femur, and it, extern it actually is an external rotator of the femur. So same with the iliacus. So your most powerful flexors of the hip are external rotators, which is another good reason why we should externally rotate during flexion, because the main muscles that cause flexion also cause external rotation. Um, there are exceptions to that, like the TFL does not. It internally rotates. So let's look at hip flexion. Keep your eyes on those bone spurs. Let's, uh, they're probably going to disappear, but keep your eyes on where those are. There we go. Okay, so I hope you can see where the bone spurs would have been. And right there, you can see that now during flexion, there is not a lot of space here, right? There, and remember, some of that space is actually occupied by a labrum and, uh, and some connective tissues. So there's really not much space at all for that bone to exist. So what we do is we externally rotate. And if we externally rotated this femur, then we would actually um, sort of clear up a little bit of space because it would actually take the whole neck of the femur and essentially move it out and down, even though the, the larger portion of the bone here is moving up it would move out and down, right? So if I, you can see if, 
here we go. So if the femur fits into the acetabulum here, if you're in flexion, then this is where you are. But if you externally rotate, look, I've cleared space. So I'm going to point to the area I'm talking about with my thumb. So right here, if I'm just in flexion, there's not much space right here. But if I externally rotate, look at that. Now I've got all this space. See that? So internally rotating during flexion pinches it up. And there's actually a hard end. So internally rotating, I actually run into the bone. This is it. I cannot go any further. And so I'm going to create impingement. It's going to hurt. But if I externally rotate, I've got all this space and I can continue to flex no problem, right? So that's why we externally rotate during flexion.